few things are as engaging as glow-in-the-dark stuff, whether we're talking about waves that glow in the evening or fireflies. I'm Dr. Anna Maria Hout, herbalist and microbiologist with Osada Natural Health. This is episode one of Fungal Folklore. So we're going to get into foxfire, fairy lights, and fungi today. And so folks have been noticing glowing apparitions in the woods around the globe since antiquity. This has been documented across continents all around the world. So what I'm nerding out on here is actually different than the will-o'-the-wisp, which is a really neat phenomenon that has been observed over the ages above swamps where there are seeming, um, seemingly fires or lights that are floating above the water. And this actually comes from the ignition of swamp gases. So here's a really cool picture or painting rather of the will-o'-the-wisp by Herman Hendrick. Nope. So what I'm talking about instead is something different, a different phenomenon that, for example, in Europe has been referred to as fairy lights or fairy sparks. So it was thought that when you saw this glow in the woods that it was fairies dancing or doing other fairy things. So yeah, a lot of really cool folklore around this phenomenon. In some parts of the world, these glowing lights were called ghost lights and they were thought to be one's ancestors. So they weren't necessarily feared or anything but respected. Uh, Although elsewhere in the world, these lights were feared. It was thought that to follow these glowing lights into the woods meant certain death. So you stay away from the light. Back in Aristotle's time, they were referred to as cold fire. This is what he called them because the glow was not associated with any heat. So hence it was a cold fire. In my neck of the woods in Colorado in the 19th century, miners thought that when they encountered this glow in the woods, specifically glowing wood in the woods, that that was a spot where one of their colleagues died, where another miner died. This was also believed in parts of California as well back in the 19th century. In Japan, these nighttime lights are called foxfire, at least in parts of Japan, and they're thought to be due to magical foxes called kitsune, who are setting fires around old rotting trees at night. And so um, another explanation, though, for the term foxfire that has been associated with this glowing phenomenon uh, comes from Old French, meaning false fire, false fire. And so this is a glow from rotting wood that's not due to an actual fire. So the fox fire in Old French means false fire. But to be honest, I prefer the kitsune story. And this is my lame attempt to draw a kitsune dancing around a tree that she set on fire. So what are we talking about here? If you haven't figured it out already based on the title is we're talking about glow in the dark mushrooms, bioluminescent fungi. Here is an example of wood lit up at night by bioluminescent fungi. So in this case, it's the mycelia of the fungus that is glowing. The mycelia is the fungus itself. It's the living organism inside whatever substrate it happens to be eating, in this case, wood. So this is what those miners in Colorado and California were seeing, and they took it to mean a spot where one of their colleagues had died. This is what they called jack-o'-lanterns. So glow-in-the-dark fungal mycelia. But it's not just the mycelia of fungi that can glow. In other species, the spores glow. So this is, excuse me, bitter oyster mushroom. And when the spores of a mushroom uh, glow, what you see is the outline of the gills, where the spores come from. In the case of this gilled mushroom here, the bitter oyster mushroom. So a really beautiful image. To be clear, this was not an instant exposure when the photograph was taken. Presumably this was um, a longer exposure so that enough light could be captured by the camera to, to make this really vivid, stunning image. So the spores, for those of you that don't, don't know, are the way that a fungus will reproduce. It grows a fruiting body, what we call a mushroom, that then produces spores that then get spread by various means. We'll come back to that spread in just a moment. Now, another uh, glowy part of the mushroom can be the fruiting body itself, what we would call the mushroom. So this is a mycena species here that is glowing. Uh, And mycena have a lot of cool names, (laughs) common names. Uh, Heavenly light mushroom is one. Pigeon fire mushroom is a name for one of these species in Japan. Uh, In fact, there are, I don't know, I guess 80 
or more species at this point that have been identified to be bioluminescent. Here's yet another genus that has glow-in-the-dark mushrooms. And again, it's not that the mushrooms just wait till it's nighttime to turn on their light. It's just that we don't see the glow until there is the contrast of darkness around. So this is the Umphalotus genus, and there are a lot of really cool names uh, for these fungi, including the jack-o'-lantern mushroom, which is actually different than what miners were observing. Ghost fungus is a name for an Omphalata species. The night moon mushroom is another beautiful name for another Omphalata species. So lots of really cool names and folklore around these really stunningly beautiful mushrooms. Now, the question may arise if you are a nerd, how do they glow? How is this happening? And the science is showing that it's quite similar to the glow that fireflies make. So it starts out with a molecule called luciferin that I have diagrammed here as a gray blob. And luciferin uh, requires the presence of oxygen or O2 here in order to glow. So what happens is if the enzyme luciferase is around, uh, then it catalyzes the formation formation of oxyluciferin. So this is an unstable but highly activated molecule. And a byproduct is some carbon dioxide or CO2. So luciferin and oxygen are melded together by the enzyme luciferase to form the highly reactive but unstable oxyluciferin. And what happens is that the oxygen from the oxyluciferin goes away um, and it goes back uh, into the ground state of luciferin. It's no longer an activated molecule. But when this transition happens from oxyluciferin back to luciferin, aside from the oxygen that's released, there is energy in the form of light that is released as well. And this cycle can go around and around and around. Luciferin and oxygen plus luciferase equals oxyluciferin. When this energized oxyluciferin starts to lose its energy and its oxygen, then the glow is emitted. So round and round we go. So people, of course, have found uh, practical uses for these glowing mushrooms. And so in some parts of the world, they're used as lights on very dark winter nights. Maybe not as bright as an LED, but certainly better than nothing when there aren't any other options. Uh, the mushrooms have been used in other parts of the world to light pathways through a dark forest at night. So you can line the sides of the path with the mushrooms and everybody can find their way back and forth. Glowing fungi were used on one's person for ritual nighttime dances, which sounds reminiscent of Burning Man. <laughs> and uh, during World War II, actually, uh, these glowing mushrooms of different species were used for light in the trenches. Although I wonder if that could also possibly make that trench a target as well. I guess it depends how far away one can see these mushrooms. Now, in terms of the purpose for the, the fungi themselves, the most boring explanation I've seen out there is that this is simply a byproduct of wood lignin di uh, digestion by the fungus. So fungi, some fungi, uh, the ones that live on wood, eat lignin. And so one idea is that these glowing chemicals are simply a byproduct of that. Boring explanation. Another explanation uh, that could be species specific or not relevant at all is that maybe this glow signals to potential predators or you know things that want to eat the mushroom. The, hey, stay away. Don't take a bite of me. I'm toxic. This is kind of like toxic animals that are brightly colored as a warning not to eat them. Now, a somewhat recent study has documented, at least for some species of glowing fungi, that this glow might actually serve to lure in pollinators, so wasps or ants uh, or beetles or flies or what have you that are attracted to the glow and come in and walk around on the mushroom and then carry away the mushroom spores as they go off on their travels to spread the mushroom. Science aside, seeing glowing lights in the woods at night when nobody else is around still seems pretty magical and a bit eerie to me. Thanks for watching.